Hello, my name is Sean Luce, and I'm a technical marketing engineer for Azure NetApp Files. As you may have heard, Microsoft recently announced the availability of Azure NetApp Files data stores for Azure VMware Solution. That's a bit of a mouthful. Let's call it ANF Data Stores for AVS. This feature gives you the ability to expand the storage available to your AVS workloads without the need to add more AVS hosts. Yes, that's right, ANF can mount directly to your AVS hosts to expand your data store capacity. This results in a lower TCO and gives you the flexibility to grow or shrink your storage landscape in near real time as business needs change. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps to build an Azure VMware Solution private cloud and provision an Azure NetApp Files data store. Here are the high-level steps we'll be covering in this video. Create an Azure Resource Group. Deploy an Azure VMware Solution Private Cloud and Cluster. Create an Azure Virtual Network. Connect the AVS Private Cloud to the Virtual Network via ExpressRoute. Configure the Virtual Network Gateway for optimal performance. Create an Azure NetApp Files account, capacity pool, and volume. Attach the Azure NetApp Files volume as an AVS data store. Verify the Azure NetApp Files data store by logging into the vSphere client. Before we dive in, I recommend reviewing the Azure VMware Solution documentation. The AVS documentation has a great tutorial section that outlines the steps involved in planning and building an AVS private cloud. Start with the network planning checklist to get a good understanding of the network requirements and best practices. Proper network planning is critical for a smooth deployment. Once you are comfortable with the networking requirements, review the next section titled Create a Private Cloud. This will be a good overview of the steps we will be following in this video. Now that you have some understanding of the steps involved, let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a resource group. This resource group will act as a logical container for all of the various resources involved in the AVS deployment. Within the Azure portal, navigate to Resource Groups, click Create, give your resource group a name, and select the region that you will be deploying your AVS private cloud in. In this case, we are selecting West Europe. Now that we've successfully created our resource group, next we'll create our Azure VMware Solution private cloud. Navigate to Azure VMware Solution, click Create. From the dropdown, select the resource group you created in the previous step. Give your AVS private cloud a name, select your desired region, select the size of your hosts, select the number of hosts you would like in your default cluster, and finally, provide the address block that will be used for your private cloud. This needs to be in CIDR notation and have a size of slash 22. Click Next to provide any tags as required. Click Next, Review and Create. And finally, click Create. The private cloud deployment can take anywhere from four to six hours. Now is a good time to review the tutorial's documentation that outlines the networking configuration. This portion of the documentation outlines the steps to integrate your AVS private cloud with your Azure VNet so you can connect to other Azure native resources like Azure NetApp Files. While we wait for our private cloud to build, we can begin deploying the rest of the network components. We'll start by creating the VNet that we will later connect to our AVS private cloud. Navigate to Virtual Networks, click Create,
From the drop-down menu, select your resource group, give the virtual network a name, and verify the region is the same as your AVS private cloud. Next, click IP addresses. You can use the IPv4 address space provided or supply your own. It is important that this CIDR range does not overlap with the address space allocated to your AVS private cloud. Do not add any additional subnets at this time. Click Next until the Create button appears, and finally, click Create. Once your VNet has been deployed, click Go to Resource to navigate to your virtual network. From the left-hand menu, select Subnets. In the top menu, select Add Gateway Subnet to create a gateway subnet. This step is critical as your VNet must contain a gateway subnet in order to connect it to your AVS private cloud. At this point, you'll likely need to wait several more hours for your AVS private cloud to finish deploying. To check the status, navigate back to Azure VMware Solution, select your private cloud, and verify that the status shows succeeded. Once it does, we can continue our deployment by connecting our AVS private cloud to the VNet that we created in the previous step. In the left-hand menu, select Connectivity, and in the tab titled Azure VNet Connect, select your virtual network from the drop-down menu and click the Save button in the top left corner. This connection process can take a few minutes as several resources are being created. Once the deployment is complete, expand the deployment details and select the virtual network gateway that was created. From the virtual network gateway, in the left-hand menu, click Configuration. By default, the virtual network gateway SKU is configured as standard. To get the best possible performance for your Azure NetApp Files data store, this should be changed to Ultra. From the SKU drop-down menu, select Ultra Performance and click Save. Once the Ultra SKU deployment is complete, click on Go to Resource to navigate back to your virtual network gateway. The last step is to enable FastPath. FastPath enables more direct routing between your AVS private cluster and your Azure VNet, which will decrease the latency between your AVS cluster and your Azure NetApp Files data store. To enable FastPath, click on Connections, select the connection, click on Configuration, click the FastPath box, and click Save. Now that we have established ExpressRoute connectivity with FastPath and upgraded our virtual network gateway SKU to ultra performance, we are almost ready to deploy our Azure NetApp Files data store. But before we do, we'll need to create an Azure NetApp Files delegated subnet within our VNet. This subnet is where our Azure NetApp Files IP endpoints are provisioned. To create the delegated subnet, navigate back to your VNet and select Subnets from the left-hand menu. Click Add Subnet. Give your subnet a name. Confirm the subnet address range. And from the drop-down menu, select Microsoft.NetApp slash Volumes. Finally, click Save. Now, we are ready to begin provisioning our Azure NetApp Files resources. We'll start by creating a NetApp account. From within the Azure portal, navigate to Azure NetApp Files. Click Create to create a new NetApp account. Give your account a name, 
select the resource group you created in the previous step and confirm the location. Finally, click Create. Once the NetApp account deployment is complete, click Go to Resource. From your NetApp account, select Capacity Pools in the left-hand menu. Select Add Pool. Give your capacity pool a name. Choose a service level, either Standard, Premium, or Ultra, depending on the performance requirements of your workload. Enter a size in tebibytes for your capacity pool. You can always increase or decrease this size later without service disruption as needed. Leave the QoS type as Auto and click Create. Now that we have our capacity pool created, we can create our Azure NetApp Files volume. The volume is the component that we connect to our AVS private cloud via the NFS protocol. Select your capacity pool, select volumes from the left-hand menu, select add volume, give your volume a name, choose a size in Gibby bytes, and remember the size of your volume combined with the service level of your capacity pool will determine the performance. Confirm the virtual network and subnet that we created in the previous step. For network features, make sure to select Standard. Click Next. In the Protocol tab, verify that NFS is selected for the protocol type and NFS v3 is selected for the version. At this time, only NFS v3 is supported for AVS data stores. Check the box titled Azure VMware Solution Data Store. For increased security, you can modify the export policy to restrict the allowed clients only to your AVS private cloud CIDR range. For this example, we are leaving the default export policy. Click Next, Review and Create, and finally Create. Allow up to five minutes for your first Azure NetApp Files volume to be deployed. Once your volume deployment is complete, we can connect it to our AVS cluster to create the Azure NetApp Files AVS data store. Navigate back to your AVS private cluster and click on Storage in the left-hand menu. Next, select Connect Azure NetApp Files Volume from the top menu. Using the drop-down menus, select the NetApp account, capacity pool, and volume that you created in the previous steps. Select the cluster you would like to attach the data store to. Give your data store a name. I like to keep the volume name and the data store name the same to avoid confusion. Finally, click Connect. You have now provisioned an Azure NetApp Files data store to your AVS private cloud. For a quick verification, navigate back to your private cloud and click Storage from the left-hand menu. Verify your new data store is connected and healthy. To further verify, let's log in to the vSphere client and take a look. Your vSphere client URL and credentials can be found in the identity pane within your private cloud. Take note of the web client URL, admin username, and admin password. From your jump host, open your web browser and navigate to your web client URL. Click on Launch vSphere Client and log in with the credentials provided. Click on the Data Stores icon 
and verify your new Azure NetApp Files data store is present. Congratulations, you have successfully deployed an Azure VMware solution, private cloud, and provisioned an Azure NetApp Files data store. For more information on Azure NetApp Files data stores, including deployment steps, performance best practices, architecture diagrams, and frequently asked questions, head on over to the Azure NetApp Files documentation at docs.microsoft.com. Thanks and have a great day.